Well, we have breaking news this afternoon from Mar-a-Lago. President Trump named a new national security advisor to replace General Michael Flynn, who he asked to resign last week. The president also named the chief of staff for his national security team. Here was Mr. Trump a short while ago. General H.R. McMaster will become the national security advisor. He's a man of tremendous talent and tremendous experience. He is highly respected by everybody in the military, and we're very honored to have him. He also has known for a long time General Keith Kellogg, and uh, Keith is going to be chief of staff. I know uh, John Bolton, we're going to be asking to work with us in a somewhat different capacity. Mm. Uh, we, we got a lot of information right there, Kimberly. H.R. McMaster, general, is going to be, uh, he's going to run the show, but you heard John Bolton's name mentioned and uh, Kellogg's name mentioned as well. Uh, McMaster, is, he, had, he, uh, he graduated from the West Point, Ph.D. from University of California, mm -hmm. Chapel Hill, great school. Mm -hmm. He also wrote a couple of books, Dereliction of Duty, which I think people see as the um, this description of what went wrong with Vietnam. But for me, one of the big highlights um, in 2016, last year, he was overseeing a high-level government panel intended to figure out how, how the Army should adapt to a new relationship with Russia. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like a fantastic choice, doesn't it? And I know that he's well regarded um, in the military community. So I think this is someone that is uh, eager to serve, which is also what you want. It's a huge commitment. So we're happy to have, right, his service on behalf of the country. And it's important, I think, that he have a good relationship with General Kellogg, which uh, we understand that he does. Uh, this seems to be, from the sources I've talked to, a, a pick that the president was very enthusiastic about, someone that he feels that he can work well with. And this isn't somebody that has to go through a confirmation process as well. So hopefully then just get right to work. And Dana 0304, Director of uh, um, Advisory Group at CENTCOM. Mm -hmm. uh, 0406, Command Assignment, 3rd Armored Cavalry uh, Regiment. Your thoughts on this pick? Well, I just think that America is blessed with um, several people, uh, McMaster being one of them, that dedicates their life to their country in a way of serving uh, through the military. Um, and other interesting thing I think about this pick, and I think why he's so well regarded, you saw um, after the announcement, the, everyone from the neocons to the foreign policy establishment group, everyone loves him. In fact, David French of National Review called him the Neil Gorsuch of the military. Very nice. um, but he, um, <laughs> In that time frame of when they uh, went to West Point, and he wrote the book about Vietnam, part of that is be that they really understand the need for hard and soft power. That, for example, when the surge was put forward um, in 07 and 08, that was led by General Petraeus, and part of that, that wasn't just adding more military, it was bringing in the State Department and the diplomatic side of things in order to clear, hold, and build. And I think that he comes from that school of thought, and I think he will work very well not only with General Mattis at Department of Defense, but also the Secretary of State, Rex Tillerson. Uh, Bob, what does the left think of this pick? Well, I don't, you know, I think it's uh, not too terribly controversial. I mean, the guy is, uh, he was a real hero during the, the Desert War. He took, what, four tanks up against 100 uh, Iraqi uh, tanks. Uh, and he's known as a fiscal hawk. I mean, he wants to spend a lot of money, as does uh, Comrade Trump. And I... I think that the, uh, that uh, yeah you got can we just can we stop with the no, comrade Trump no can we just no. just for right now can we no. do it uh, for right now okay for you I'll do it okay. for right now let's, for, let's try uh, one show at a time the uh, uh, well I didn't commit to that I said it to this question <laughs> um, I think the the real question is is uh, you know I'm I'm interested in what happens with Mattis and Tillerson here are the adults in this uh, foreign policy team and defense team who were cut out of strategic issues like the one state solution and then you've got Tillerson over in the, in the uh, group of 20 uh, and all of a sudden uh, Trump is trying to repair the damage that Trump did about NATO and then Trump said something else about NATO and I you know it, it's very difficult to imagine how these guys are going to do under a Trump it all depends on how well the president organizes himself and from what we've seen so far this is probably the most disorganized president since Buchanan. I would think Tommy the good place to start would be a guy who graduated West Point and had had an illustrious military career behind him. Yeah, obviously uh, well qualified, and it looks like he's, he, you know, it, everyone agrees it's a good pick. Everyone except Bob, maybe or maybe even Bob. I, I, I think he's probably fine. I don't think it matters. But you uh, think the national security advisor is not even ever known. Who's the, yeah, who's who's the, the, fourth, who's the fourth guy out? Who got left out? There were four people under consideration. Well, look, everybody got a job. Petraeus was. Uh, oh, I, I think he decided not. he didn't want to get involved. Petraeus yeah. didn't 
did not want to no, do it. I thought it. there was somebody beyond both. Specific uh, request. Well, maybe not. But this but takes that story off the front page. I mean, what have I been reading for the past week is that nobody wants the job. I don't think any of that was really true. Um, so <laughs> that's, uh, you know, Flynn is, is pushed aside as a news story. So obviously it's good news for, for Trump. All right, let's do this. Let's go forward. On Saturday, the president addressed national security at his first rally since inauguration. And it was just like the campaign. President Trump looking very comfortable back on that stage, fired up the crowd the way he did for most of the 2016 campaign. He focused on three themes. The first, though, was terror and security. He told Americans he got a plan. He has a plan to keep terrorists out. Listen. I've taken decisive action to keep radical Islamic terrorists the hell out of our country. The president has the right to keep people out if he feels it's not in the best interest of our country, right? We will do something uh, next week. I think you'll be impressed. Let's see what happens. Here's the bottom line. We've got to keep our country safe. You look at what's happening. We've got to keep our country safe. All right, Bobby, that guy was relaxed. He was comfortable. He was back on the stage firing up a ten, crowd of 10,000 or so. That was, that was the guy who's probably been holding back for a good 30, one or two days. Yeah, let me go back to Comrade because I think that's the... Uh, Wait, you agreed to a whole day. A whole well, show, I said, one, no, no, I agreed to the question you had. But, but <laughs> listen, uh, if you if I, you had to sit where I sit and listen to what you guys called Obama, I think it's very fair. We Comrade, didn't say that. Uh, uh, say that Comrade's much. a nice term. I mean, it's, but anyway, uh, he, yes, he's comfortable doing this. And yes, he had, you know, you could build a crowd. I could, if I had 150,000 bucks, I could build a crowd like that for you and they'd cheer. Uh, the problem is... You don't even need that. The no. the, yeah, you probably would. Uh, but, you know, the, the thing is, one thing he says, I've taken decisive action. No, he hasn't. He said he did a historic deal down on the border. He has not. All this now comes to the question of, is he going to be able to implement this? And now he's going to have to run into something called the other two branches of government. And when he starts to have to deal, whoever let him go out there and say, for example, that he's going to have in two weeks a new health care plan that's going to be better and less costly, it should be indicted. Because that's not going to happen. And, and so Congress is not going to let that happen. So I think he set himself up. Dana, we, we got uh, a lot of news came out of that. There's a lot of, um, you know, a lot, a lot of fired up speech. But we also heard he's going to release a new executive order this week. Um, a lot of other things came out of that. Yeah, so he, um, the executive order was released in the first week, the, the end of the first week. So they've been having to deal with that for three to four weeks. And now we hear that the final uh, document is being put together. And there's going to be a lot more scrutiny on it just because of what's happened in the last month. But I do think that there does need to be some deference to whoever the commander-in-chief is because that person alone is responsible for the protection of the country. Now, of course, I do think that Congress will have a chance to weigh in. The courts might even have to weigh in. But um, nobody knows the responsibility um, except for President Trump because he hears the briefings, he knows what the threats are, and I think there has to be some deference within the law um, to allow him to do what he needs to do to protect us. Mm -hmm. Kimberly, I was watching that speech and, uh, with a bunch of friends, and they all said, wow, you know, he did really well with this. He was very comfortable. He was, mm -hmm. he was in his element at that moment, more so than I thought, even with that big press conference he had with the, with the media, you know, that big fight with the media, sure. or any other time in the last month or so, this is where he thrives. He gets his message out, too, by the way. Well, he, yeah, but he's relying on himself to be the, the messenger and connect with people because he's comfortable doing that. That is um, very familiar to him because he did it during the campaign. So that was similar to what we saw during the presidential election, and then he pulled out the paper and read from the executive order to say I have the authority to do that. Yes, I was surprised when the courts did not uh, allow me to pr proceed forward. However, and we heard from General Kelly at the Munich Security Conference as well, uh, telling us that the president was going to be releasing a new executive order that is more streamlined and in keeping with uh, the proper tenets of it so there wouldn't be this kind of a controversy again. So we look forward to that. And keep in mind, General Kelly is in place now to ensure that people don't fall through the cracks. And, and Tommy, guess what? The same seven countries were targeted and remember that big backlash saying, oh, this is a Muslim ban. No, it's not a Muslim ban. It's a or origin, a uh, region of origin of where, where terrorists likely come from and, as Dana has pointed out in the past, where the government is virtually non-existent. And, uh, you know, it helped that Obama did list those seven countries as well. But, mm -hmm. yes, I think the, this is the way you've got to do executive orders. It's brilliant. Everyone said, oh, he botched it. You know, he, he issued the order. It was too fast. It was hasty. But I think it seems to have worked out. You issue it. Everyone tells you what's wrong with it. Then you cross those things off and issue it again. I think it's fantastic. That's, that's brilliant. That's a, well, that's, look. A, that's, a hell, that's a hell of a way to run a government. <laughs> Wait a minute. This I mean, could have been done, done a month ago. 
Well, I mean, if he just somebody said to him, you know, green card holders actually month. have a right to come in, Mr. President. Well, look, it, it looks like they're going to have an executive order that already has. You know, everything, everything's all set because they've already told them it's what was wrong. It's Groundhog Day. We ought to have another well, one. Well, too bad your team delayed, uh, you know, his no, cabinet no. being put in place. Well, that's, that, so that's these because safe one, cards could be one of them forward. was uh, the guy that had the EPA, by the way, has sued EPA 14 times. This is a good idea. Well, that, that, I like that kind of guy. I'm sure you, know you why? do. Because the EPA was probably wrong for 114 times. Yeah, right. <laughs> and good right. for him for suing him. By the way, what, how, what better way to... to, to um, dismantle EPA regulations. What a better guy. No one who knows the ins and outs of the Because <laughs> he sued him for You wait you tried to dismantle those things. You know what this bureaucracy is going to do to these guys? And Pruitt, of all people, you know, this guy, first of all, well, you know, I think we've already established the fact that uh, this, the nominee for Secretary of Labor was a wife beater. Uh, but, oh, oh, my God. He's got, he's, he was. All right, well, Bob, we have to be careful with things like that. You no, we don't. It's in the record. Department. Why are you guys, have you guys all taken the Kool Aid at one time? I mean, come on. There's got to be an antidote here. At least you got to step back and say, this has been a rough start. Can you say that much? You know, you look like that big Kool-Aid pitcher for Obama for about eight years or so. Remember oh, no. That? No, he, I had to sit he here and defend him. I've said you many times, I felt like the only fire plug at the Westminster dog show. <laughs> so so <laughs> don't, what? you guys have a little we, get back we coming your gonna, way now. We were going to do a little sound of, of, of the immigration, um, it, it, the, the border wall and, and what that, that, that Donald Trump the talked about. From China. We ran out of time, so we'll do that maybe later in the show or maybe tomorrow.